How's it going, everybody? We are back. Um, I know this has been really inconsistent, but I wanted to wait, get everything the right way, because it's, it's October, we're kicking off the spooky month, and uh, what better way to do that than to add on to our Goosebumps collection here. We're starting with Chapter 17 today. Um, if you haven't listened to the previous Goosebumps episodes, I urge you to stop this one, go back, listen to the minisodes, because I am reading... Uh, the chapters from the Goosebumps book from the beginning. This is uh, book three, Monster Blood, um, of the original Goosebumps series, and uh, we are uh, we're underway here. We're a little little more than the halfway point, uh, chapter seventeen, seventeen, sorry. And um, well, as always, let's hit the theme song and we'll get right into it. Chapter 17. The brothers stepped out of the shadows of the hedge. Their short blonde hair caught the late afternoon sunlight. They were both grinning gleefully. Evan stood frozen in place, staring from one to the other. No one said a word. One of the Bamers grabbed the bucket from Evan's hand and tossed it to the ground. The bucket hit with a heavy thud, and its thick green contents oozed onto the grass, making disgusting sucking sounds. Hey! Evan cried, breaking the tense silence. He didn't have a chance to say more. The other twin punched him hard in the stomach. Evan felt the pain radiate through his body. The punch took his breath away. He gasped for air. He didn't see the next punch. It landed on his cheek just below his right eye. He howled in pain and his hands flailed the air helplessly. Both brothers were hitting him now, and then one of them gave Evan's shoulders a hard shove and he went sprawling onto the cool, damp grass. The pain swept over him, blanketing him, followed by a wave of nausea. He closed his eyes, gasping noisily, waiting for the sharp ache in his stomach to fade. The ground seemed to tilt. He reached out and grabbed it, and held on tightly so he wouldn't fall off. When he finally managed to raise his head, Andy was standing over him, her eyes wide with alarm. Evan? He groaned, and pushing with both hands tried to sit up. The dizziness, the spinning, tilting grass forced him to lie back down. Are they gone? he asked, closing his eyes, willing the dizziness away. Rick and Tony? I saw them run away, Andy said, kneeling beside him. Are you okay? Should I call my mom? He opened his eyes. Yeah, no, I don't know. What happened, she demanded. He raised a hand to his cheek. Ow! It was already swollen, too painful to touch. They beat you up? Either that or I was hit by a truck, he groaned. A few minutes later, it seemed like hours. He was back on his feet, breathing normally, rubbing his swollen cheek. I've never been in a fight before, he told Andy, shaking his head. Never. It doesn't look like it was much of a fight, she said, her expression still tight with concern. He started to laugh, but it made his stomach hurt. We'll pay them back, Andy said bitterly. We'll find a way to pay them back, the creeps. Oh, look, the monster blood, Evan hurried over to it. The bucket lay on its side. The green gunk had oozed onto the grass, forming a wide, thick puddle. I'll help you get it back in the bucket, Andy said, leaning over to stand the bucket up. Hope it doesn't kill the grass. My dad'll have a cow if his precious lawn is hurt. It's so heavy, Evan said, groaning as he tried to push the glob into the bucket. It doesn't want to move. Let's try picking up handfuls, Andy suggested. Whoa, it doesn't want to come apart, Evan said in surprise. Look, it sticks together. It's like taffy, Andy said. Ever see them make taffy in those taffy machines? The stuff just sticks together in one big glob. This isn't taffy, Evan muttered. It's disgusting. Working together, they managed to lift the entire green ball and drop it into the bucket. The stuff made a sickening sucking sound as it filled the bucket, and both Evan and Andy 
had trouble pulling their hands out of it. It's so sticky, Andy said, making a disgusted face. And warm, Evan added. He finally managed to free his hands from it. It's like it's trying to swallow my hands, he said, wiping his hands on his t-shirt, sucking them in. Take it home, Andy said. She looked up to the house to see her mother motioning to her from the front window. Uh-oh, dinner time. I've got to go. Her eyes stopped at his swollen cheek. Wait till your aunt sees you. She probably won't even notice, Evan said glumly. He picked up the bucket by the handle. What are we going to do with this stuff? We'll take it back to the toy store tomorrow, Andy replied, taking long strides across the lawn to the house. Huh? That's what we'll do. We'll simply take it back. Evan didn't think it was such a hot idea, but he didn't have the strength to argue about it now. He watched Andy disappear into the house. Then he headed slowly back to Catherine's, his head throbbing, his stomach aching. Creeping along the wall of the house, he slipped into the garage through the side door to hide the bucket of monster blood. Sliding it behind an overturned wheelbarrow, he realized that the bucket was full to the top. But I gave Andy a big hunk of it, he thought. The bucket had been only two-thirds full. I'll have to find a bigger place to put it, he decided. Tonight, maybe there's a box or something in the basement. He crept into the house, determined to clean himself up before seeing Catherine. She was still busy in the kitchen, he saw, leaning over the stove, putting the last touches on dinner. He tiptoed up the stairs and washed up. Unable to do much about his swollen red cheek, he changed into a clean pair of baggy shorts and a fresh t-shirt and carefully brushed his hair. As they sat down at the dining room table, Catherine's eyes fell on Evan's swollen cheek. You been in a fight? she asked, squinting suspiciously at him. You're a little roughneck, aren't you? Just like your father. Chicken was always getting into scrapes, always picking on boys twice his size. I wasn't exactly picking on them, Evan muttered, spearing a chunk of beef from his stew with his fork. All through dinner, Catherine stared at his swollen cheek, but she didn't say another word. She doesn't care if I'm hurt or not, Evan thought miserably. She really doesn't care. She didn't even ask if it hurts. In a way, he was grateful. He didn't need her getting all upset, making a fuss because he was in a fight, maybe calling his parents in Atlanta and telling them. Well, she couldn't call his parents. She couldn't use the phone. She couldn't hear. Evan downed a big plate of beef stew. It was pretty good, except for the vegetables. The silence seemed so loud. He began thinking about his problem, the monster blood. Should he tell Catherine about it? He could write down the whole problem on a yellow pad and hand it to her to read. It would feel so good to tell someone to have an adult take over the problem and handle it. But not his Aunt Catherine, he decided. She was too weird. She wouldn't understand. She wouldn't know what to do. And she wouldn't care. Andy was right. They had to carry the stuff back to the toy store. Give it back. Just get rid of it. But in the meantime, he had to find something to keep it in. Evan waited in his room until he heard Catherine go to bed a little after 10 o'clock. Then he crept down the stairs and headed out to the garage. Chapter 18 It was a cool, clear night. Crickets sent up a relentless curtain of noise. The black sky glittered with tiny specks of stars. The round beam of light from the flashlight in his hand darted across the driveway, leading Evan to the dark garage. As he entered, something scuttled across the floor near the back wall. Maybe it was just a dead leaf, blown by the wind when I opened the door, he thought, hopefully. He moved the flashlight unsteadily, beaming it onto the overturned wheelbarrow. Then the light darted across the garage ceiling as he bent down, reached behind the wheelbarrow, and pulled out the bucket of monster blood. He moved the light to the center of the bucket and gasped. The green substance was quivering up over the top. It's growing much faster than before, he thought. I've got to find something bigger to hide it in, just for tonight. The bucket was too heavy to carry with one hand. Tucking the flashlight into his armpit, he gripped the bucket handle with both hands and hoisted the bucket off the floor. Struggling to keep from spilling it, he made his way into the dark house. He paused at the door to the basement steps, silently setting the heavy bucket down on the linoleum floor. He clicked the light switch on the wall. Somewhere downstairs, a dim light flickered on, casting a wash of pale yellow light over the concrete floor. There's got to be something to put this stuff in down there, Evan thought. Hoisting up the bucket, he made his way slowly, carefully down the steep, dark stairway, leaning his shoulder against the wall to steady himself. Waiting for his eyes to adjust to the pale light, he saw that the basement was one large room, low-ceilinged and damp. 
It was cluttered with cartons, stacks of old newspapers and magazines, and old furniture and appliances covered in stained, yellowed bedsheets. Something brushed his face as he stepped away from the stairs. He uttered a silent cry, dropping the bucket, raised his hands to swipe at the thick cobwebs that seemed to reach out for him. They clung to his skin, dry and scratchy, as he frantically pulled at them. He suddenly realized it wasn't the web that was moving across his cheek. It was a spider. With a sharp intake of breath, he brushed it away. But even after he saw the insect scuttle across the floor, he could still feel its prickly feet moving on his face. Moving quickly away from the wall, his heart pounding now, his eyes searching the open wooden shelves hidden in the shadow against the far wall, he stumbled over something on the floor. Oh! He fell headfirst over it, throwing his hands forward to break his fall. A human body! There's someone laying under him! No. Calm down, Evan. Calm down, he instructed himself. He pulled himself shakily to his feet. It was a dressmaker's dummy he had stumbled over. Probably a model of Catherine when she was younger. He rolled it out of the way as his eyes searched the shadowy room for a container to store the monster blood. What was that long, low object in front of the work table? Moving closer, he saw that it was an old bathtub. The insides stained and peeling. It's big enough, he realized, and quickly decided to store the green gunk inside it. With a loud groan, he hoisted the bucket onto the side of the old tub. His stomach muscles were still sore from the punch he had taken, and the pain shot through his body. He waited for the aching to fade, then tilted the bucket. The thick green substance rolled out of the bucket and hit the tub bottom with a sickening soft plop. Evan set the bucket aside and stared down at the monster blood, watching it ooze, spreading thickly over the bottom of the bathtub. To his surprise, the tub appeared nearly half full. How fast was this stuff growing? He was leaning over the tub, about to make his way back upstairs when he heard the cat screech. Startled, he let go of the side of the tub just as Sarabeth leaped onto his back. Evan didn't have time to cry out as he toppled forward over the edge of the tub and into the thick green gunk. Chapter 19 Evan landed hard on his elbows, but the thick monster blood softened the fall. He heard the cat screech again and pad away. He sank into the ooze, his arms and legs flailing, trying to lift himself away, but the sticky substance was sucking him down, pulling with surprising force. His whole body seemed to be held by it, stuck as if in cement, and now it was quivering up, bubbling silently, rising up to his face. I'm going to suffocate, he realized. It's trying to choke me. The warmth of it spread across his body, invaded his chest, his legs, his throat. I, I can't move. I'm stuck. It's trying to choke me. No! He pulled his head up just as the green gunk began to cover his face. Then, he struggled to twist his body, to twist himself around in it. With great effort, panting loudly, hoarse cries escaping his open lips, he pulled himself up onto a sitting position. The green substance rose up even higher, as if it were reaching up to him, reaching to drag him back down into it. Evan gripped the side of the tub with both hands, held onto it tightly, and began to force himself up, up, up from the clinging, pulling ooze, up from the strange force that seemed to be drawing him back with renewed power, up, up, no, he managed to scream as the warm green ooze slid over his shoulders, no, it was gripping his shoulders now, sliding around his neck, sucking him down, pulling him back into its sticky depths, down, down. It's got me, he realized. It's got me now. All right, man, there you have it. Our next installment of Goosebumps Monster Blood. And uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. We've got a little bit left to go, so I'm going to hold off. We're going to leave it on this cliffhanger. I will be doing more of these. promise you we will be done with this book here in the next uh, week or two. So... Um, I'm going to make up for it. We're going to have a lot of cool, spooky ideas coming for Halloween and October. Um, stay tuned. I might be doing two episodes a week this month to make up for missing months. So um, I, I'm hoping you're enjoying this. I'm having a lot of fun reading it. Um, check out the next episode. Uh, this podcast is just okay on SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, download this, and then by the end of it, you'll have the entire audiobook for free. So, uh, uh, thanks again. Viewer beware. You're in for a scare. <laughs>